Hey, what's up? This is Ken Primola here for Ask Ken Primo. If you have a question, hit me up at kenprimo at yahoo.com. I'll answer it. I'm not going to answer like any technique questions where I got to get on the mat and stuff like that. So uh, I actually had two questions within the past two weeks. They were about takedowns. Um, one was like an intricate technical question. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to uh, talk to you about what I feel to be the huge problem with takedowns and uh, something I've been writing um, some literature on actually and I want to articulate it here in a video. I want to get your guys take on it. I want to see what your thoughts are and um, you know uh, uh, if if you agree with this or not to any extent and to what extent. Uh, f many years ago I did a, a, a wrestling video series where I talked about the difference between Russian wrestling uh, and American wrestling. You could look that up on YouTube. I'm sure it's around somewhere. I'm also going to provide a, a link for you if you want some more information on takedowns no problem you can I'll, just, I'll put the link in the bottom i haven't even uh, i know i have like one free ebook out there about takedowns so i'll hit i'll give that to you so with takedowns learning takedowns and in, in my opinion the biggest reason why grapplers are having such a hard time learning takedown takedowns and mma athletes uh, let me just give you my experience with takedowns i was a division one wrestler I had a coach, DJ Jackson, uh, who was a no-gi world champion, and in about 30 days, he had a humongous turnaround uh, from the techniques that we implemented. And I also taught Dan Boyle. He got second at Pan Ams, and he was a Pan Am champion at another belt level. Uh, and we just worked a few half hours for a few weekends, and he actually had no takedown skills, and he was hitting takedowns on wrestlers and people that he had never even beaten before. So uh, that's my experience. Wrestled all my life. I actually helped teach at the school I went to, one of the Division One schools. I uh, have taught high school, taught MMA athletes, taught BJJ athletes, and it's pretty much my life. I'm, you know, psychotic about it. I uh, really, really like to study takedowns and learn them. So, content. Um, reason number one that I feel that people are not uh, getting takedowns is because they are learning uh, the wrong takedowns. What I mean by the wrong takedowns is not necessarily the wrong techniques per se, but the wrong techniques at the wrong time. I see a lot of these videos on YouTube um, just say like these crazy judo throws and somebody shows that and basically, uh, you know, a person, a person will learn the tech, see the technique, learn it, but it's so hard to implement because you don't have the foundation, you don't have the fundamentals of judo. It's just like, you know, it's more than just grappling where you're on the ground making contact and showing a move. This is like the distance, the timing, the when, everything. And it's very dangerous to, you know, just go off start and hitting a crazy judo throw with not knowing how to fall, not knowing how to use your hips, not knowing much of judo at all and the risks involved, I think it can be difficult. I think the same thing for wrestling. If you just show a technique and you show it all the way through, you show the finish, you don't break down the timing, the distance of the setup, the, the way to penetrate, when not to penetrate, when not to take the shot, and then the finish, which can be a, a, a puzzle because there's so many different finishes and the reaction for the opponent. I think you're not doing yourself justice um, in terms of learning just that one-off technique. I think you got to really break it down step by step to really understand takedowns, to have a good hold. I think you can be like a, a quick copycat and, and take that quick little shortcut if you learn the technique that way, but I don't think you're going to have real skills where once you go up against a wrestler, you're going to be able to, ha to have uh, the skills to, to keep yourself out of trouble. And in fact, I think you can get more trouble by knowing uh, just a smidgen of information can make you dangerous. Why do I say that make you dangerous? And that's kind of the second topic. Um, it can make you dangerous because there's a lot of injuries and in takedowns. And I think injuries and in takedowns are happening because we don't necessarily know the material. We don't understand, have a full grasp of it. We're getting banged up. I've seen torn knees. I've seen broken ankles. I've even seen a broken neck in my room from takedowns. But also bad back, injury, stance, posture, positioning. These are all things that I feel are making it difficult for grapplers to learn takedowns. Um, and you have to start off slow. You have to have the fundamentals down and you have to have a good partner who you trust who will not hurt you. This is very, 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 very uh, important for learning takedowns. So second thing, second topic was injuries and 
avoiding injuries by finding a good partner and going with the fundamentals and going very slow with the fundamentals. Otherwise, you know, my takedown class used to be the shortest class in terms of uh, uh, the smallest amount of people, shortest class, because people didn't want to learn them because they were brutal. They hurt them. They had to get up for work the next morning. It's tough on your body. It's a tough cardio workout. That's why I recommend, like with anything, you start off slow and you learn the fundamentals. The uh, third thing that I think is a problem is um, specialization, takedown specialization. I think you need to work with a specialist to fully and effectively learn takedowns the correct way. And it doesn't just mean learning from that person who is a takedown guru, I think you need to learn from a specialist and specialize within that learning process. And what I mean by that is, um, okay, if I learn an armbar in jiu-jitsu and, uh, you know, a guy's throwing punches at me and I'm trying to learn sport jiu-jitsu, recreational, I'm just going to, you know, go to a class and spar, I'm probably going to have a hard time learning that armbar if I talk about the variables of Uh, a guy hitting me from MMA. It's okay to learn that at at a certain point. It's okay to learn the street self-defense aspects at a certain point. But if you're just going to be using it for sparring, grappling with no contact as in strikes, then I think, you know, it's going to make it more difficult. It's going to make it more complex. There's going to be so much information there. I think it's going to be hard for you to truly, truly learn that. So that is another reason um, for, uh, you know, I feel having a difficulty to, when it comes to learning uh, takedowns. Another thing I find to be problematic is um, is the fact that, that actually, let me finish that thought. Um, so, so same thing, you know, would go for like boxing, you know, like, like you don't, hey, I'm gonna learn boxing, I'm gonna learn the jab, and then a guy th- takes a double leg takedown on you. Uh, that's just not gonna be, um, That's just not going to be, I think, a winning formula for learning boxing. Uh, And and when you talk about like MMA, the specialization of it, um, as in fusing a lot of those martial arts together, I think there are certain days within the MMA practice where you want to put it all together, but there's other days you want to work on your takedowns or other times you want to work on your takedowns. You want to work on your jiu-jitsu. Maybe you wear the gi. Uh, maybe you wear wrestling shoes in your takedowns. Maybe you just have grappling for grappling. And then maybe you have boxing for boxing. Maybe you have Muay Thai for Muay Thai. And then you can fuse it together on those days. But I think it's nice to have a ground level uh, to, 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 to acclimate to understanding everything. I know it's a lot of information to take on, but when you look at the top athletes today, like a lot of them are specialists in MMA. Like Ronda Rousey has a great judo background. She's a specialist. John Jones specializes as a wrestler, and he's also getting very, very special, specialized as a, a striker too. So he's very strong in like two categories. Um, and his grappling is actually pretty good too. I mean, he, he caught uh, Machida with like a, a guillotine. Machida is a black belt in jiu-jitsu. So like, um, but that just didn't happen overnight and he just didn't learn them all together. I would not believe, um, you know, he probably had to learn them. I've seen him, you know, train grappling separately, train his wrestling separately. He grew up on that and then train the uh, stand-up separately. And then, like I said, there's those times when you fuse it together. Also look at a guy like GSP, like he went to the Canadian wrestling team and specialized in learning just that wrestling. Uh, and he's also done other martial arts, but, but he gave it the respect that it deserves. So what I'm trying to tell you here, learn wrestling like a beginner would learn wrestling. And that's even hard to do today in America because a lot of, I think the competitive mindset of wrestling is great for MMA. Obviously they're so good at being tough. They're so good at learning other disciplines, but I think it also has some flaws when it comes to like teaching a jujitsu artist because some of those people are just recreational. So it may be difficult to just say, go hard, boom, boom, boom. I think you have to slow it down. I think the jujitsu mind is actually an excellent and preferred type of athlete to learn wrestling because they are so technically minded from learning the techniques in such a soft and gentle way as jujitsu. So these are my three little theories, problems, solutions, when it comes to learning uh, takedowns for grappling, learn the takedown by itself, learn the the dimension, the the distance, the setup, penetration, finishes, the times to do it. Then we could talk about and advance the, the, the combinations, the chain wrestling, etc. Have a good partner, have the right partner. Um, 
and 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 then again, um, you know, fundamentals, learning it by itself, and um, and and learning it. Try to learn it from a. If you can get a good wrestler, which is very rare, a good wrestler who is also a good grappler, that's when you can eventually connect the grappling to the takedowns. Because I don't like to just start talking about, oh, these takedowns, and let's apply it to grappling right now. I like to learn the takedowns first, and then we could talk about, hey, this guy can get a guillotine choke here and there and there. I don't always do it while I'm teaching the takedowns because it becomes very, very complex, and they may not even learn the takedown uh, from the get-go. So that's my stance stick into it. I want to hear your thoughts on takedowns, why people aren't learning takedowns as uh, rapidly and effectively in jiu-jitsu as, as, you know, as I think we could. And I really, really would like to, to hear your thoughts on that. Thank you for your time. I'm going to try to throw in an ebook for free about takedowns uh, below this video. All right, talk soon.